Hello, hello, and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And after yesterday's episode, where we saw how the Naquitite and the Naquium was backing up, we're going to take a bit of a dive into that and find out why things are a little bit slow. But first, and because it's quick and easy, I'm going to have a, a brief glance at how the um, how, how some of the science things are going on down in Astro, because I've did, I made a few little tweaks down here. And you might remember from last week that we had a massive shortage of these data cards, these these, these astrometric data, I think. Yes, astrometric data, and here we're making it with the third type of uh, recipe for it, the multispectral astrometric data. So you can do it in various different levels. You can do the basic one where you take in the first three cards, the infrared, visible, and UV. You can then do the second tier where you also bring in microwave and x-ray, and then the the third tier that involves radio wave and gamma ray and the, the higher up you go through the tiers the more efficient the recipe is and the more you get out for each one so at this level for example you get out 20 astrometric data for each time it runs and it uses one of each of those uh, so in, in essentially you're getting almost three times out what you put in I think the previous level gets you about double what you put in and the first level gets you about one times so you can see how it's getting it's getting better and better the further you go in which is why we're using the most advanced recipe possible and therefore why we're having to bring up these data or these types of data cards from all all the way down, 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 wherever it is they come from. But anyway, churning those through, we weren't doing it fast enough before. And so, as is traditional at this sort of stage of Factorio, I've I fixed it by putting in this beacon here with speed modules in it that is now causing everything in the in the Tier 1 Astro area to go much, much faster. And when I say everything in the Tier 1 Astro area, all of the orreries in the Tier 1 Astro area, the astrometric facilities, are now running at four times their normal speed, which is a nice, healthy improvement and should allow this to keep running nicely. And as you can see, so far, so good. We've got plenty of these cards. Now, granted, we aren't doing any astro-related research at the moment, which is um, mean, mean, which is why the whole system is a bit backed up and a bit, a bit gone to sleep. But I'm sure we'll uh, we'll be kicking it back in fairly soon when we try and do some more of the uh, long-range star mapping because that seems to be more or less inevitable. I also noticed that the Astro 2 catalog was, uh, production was struggling to keep up, and that's down. No, that's down here. The, these ones. It didn't really feel like there was room to put in a beacon around here. Although I suppose I probably could have put one in up here, maybe. But then it might no, it would have interfered with this one, so it would have had to go down here and. Yeah, I guess it probably, yeah, to, to be fair, it probably could have gone in about here, oh, yeah, you, you can see the difficulty. I'd have had to pull up some of these pipes and then, then we'd have lost one of these machines here, but it would have made them all run much faster, so it would probably have been worth it. But also, we didn't have that much of a shortage, so just putting in speed modules into these machines along here has now sped that one up, and as you can see, we've now got a full backlog there, and if we go up and look at the station, you can see that we now have a thousand of each type of, um, of catalogue in there. So this is go this has gone well. We have enough of everything at the moment. We seem to be producing it fast enough, but that could just be because we're not actually using any of it at the moment. We'll we'll see how it goes once we start to kicking in some uh, some more advanced researches. Finally, down here, I did also put in another another beacon. Yes, these these two beacons along here, I think, for uh, the these uh, gamma ray telescopes. Was it those? I've noticed it down as I upgraded the purple machines, and I'm not quite sure which ones those are now, unless it was these. Why? Well, uh, yeah. I don't know. I did. I did another upgrade somewhere through here with uh, in, in the Astro area because something was a bit too slow, and so now it's now it's running faster and therefore better, and we we seem to be okay again. Sorry, I don't seem to have made very good notes there, um, but I'll uh, so I'll just I'll just gloss over it and move swiftly on. Over here in the research area, well, things have ground to a halt. You might have noticed through the entire last video that the mining productivity didn't change at all. It's just stuck at 16%. And if we look at the labs here, we can see that that's because we don't have any of the advanced science pack 1s coming in. If look in here, again, same problem. There go no advanced science pack 1s, plenty of 2s, but no 1s. And therefore, this system, this has stopped running. Because at the moment, the research we're trying to do uses advanced science pack 1s. So that's that's now, that, that's what's stopping us from doing anything. And if we trace this back, we can follow the belt up and round here, all the way around back over into the advanced science production facilities over here and these are the machines that make the, the advanced ones and we can see that they don't have any advanced catalogs the advanced catalogs are being made here and they don't have any upvote data that apparently comes it is supposed to come in by train so that means we need to look a little bit further afield way over here where the uh, some of the advanced data cards are being made and we can come in here and have a look and see okay so these these bunnies down here ah some of them are running now we, we've, we've made some progress these machines are actually running and trying to produce them it's very very slow but you know their, their heart's in the right place and if we have a look at that, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler since we can't see exactly what the problem is now, but it was down to these energy control units. We didn't have any of those at one point. And, and so we can then trace that back along here. It turns out it goes into the station over here, which takes us back down onto the ground. And if we follow that all the way back to the source with a little bit of help from factory search, we can see, yes, over here you can see we're trying to make these energy control units and they're going into a train here, which is 
more than three quarters full, so that's not going too badly, but it's not quite as full as we'd like it to be, and therefore it's not leaving. And if we have a look in the machines here, you can see the, this is sort of the source of the problem, and that's the immersite crystals. We're not making, apparently we are not making these anything like fast enough. And those, as you'll be completely unsurprised to find out, uh, they are brought down by a train from space, and they come into a station over here somewhere, and it's the, the bigger one. Here we go. Uh, so they, they do get brought in here, and we've got actually a deep, well, there's 1,900 of them in here, and that is um, not very many, as you can sort of see, that, that won't fill up a train. That, it, that will fill up one wagon, and the trains, are, the trains require four of those. So that's not going very well. They're bit, but they are being brought down from space, in theory, from over here, from the Taras uh, spaceship. And that, so that's, as you can see, it's, it's, been, it's landed here relatively recently. We've got a load of stuff being unloaded. There's huge amounts of junk in here. A lot of it is sand, and sand is difficult to dispose of because it's, it's, it stacks up so high. Um, you can see, so these are these are stacks of 200, which means it takes ages to unload an entire stack from the warehouse. And then when you've got a warehouse that's this full of sand, it's just, it's just a very, very slow process. It takes a long time to unload it from the ship. It takes a long time to unload it from the warehouses. Um, but we do, we do then end up with a certain amount of crystal over here. It's being passed up, and it's being put into the train over here. So it is the system is working. We have a certain quantity of crystal, a certain quantity of plate available here, all being loaded into the train, and the train will then take it away to wherever it's needed. There are, the, the problem, however, is that we decided ages ago that it would be a good idea to have these as a, a mixed train like this. So you can see it fills up roughly 50-50 with the immersite crystals and the immersium plates. And so, at the time, that seemed like a good idea because we didn't have very much immersium around, and we didn't have, or immersite, whichever we want to call it at any given moment. And uh, we also didn't need it in very large quantities. So having this this joint train, well, let's see, where, where are you going at the moment? You're go uh, it's going down to Norvis, so at least it's taking it down to the planet and we're we're passing it through that way. But if we've got half a tra half a space train of um, emissite crystals, then that's not going to do a very good job of filling up a full ground train uh, in order to have them be taken off somewhere else. So I think at some point, we're probably going to want to split this off into two separate stations. So we have one for the plates and one for the crystals. The problem with that is we already have quite a lot of infrastructure set up that is expecting trains to come in with both of them on it. So the most obvious trivial version of that is down here on the ground where we expect a train to come in bringing in the crystals and the plates. Now okay it's not the end of the world we could have a second station maybe have it underneath this rail down here where the other one comes in. So have one for crystals one for plates that's not too bad but there's probably going to be somewhere up in space that's asking for both of them at the same time. Let's have a look. Now, this one's just crystals. This is material science. Over here we seem to just have crystals. Those look like they're probably being brought up from the planet. This one's just crystals. And again, I think, yes, this is just being brought up from the planet. That seems vaguely wasteful um, in, in, on the logistics front, but uh, still, never mind. Uh, over here, just crystals again. We've got both over here, but again, that's being brought up from the planet. And then this is part of the drop-off system. So actually, I take it back, it does seem that there is nowhere that is requesting both of them to the same station, at least up in space. So it would actually be quite easy to split these off. We'll just leave, we'll just end up with a, a train that just does crystals, taking the crystals to everywhere in space where they're needed, and then a separate train that takes the plates down to the ground. Because we don't seem to actually be using plates in space, apart from apart from a few of them that are being used on the bus over here. And those ones are going via Norvis anyway, and then being brought back up in the mixed train. So that doesn't matter. So yes, I think that's actually going to be a relatively easy fix. The next question from that, though, that sort of then brings up the next step, step back. And if we go over to Taras, then we can see that, well, actually the system here is running solidly. So the fact that we don't seem to be filling up buffers over on in uh, Norvis and Norbit suggests that this system is, is not the logistics at the other end that's the problem. It's not even the logistics of the spaceship. There probably is a bit of a in insufficiency. We're not, basically, we're just straight up not making it fast enough, I think. I think that's going to be the most likely cause of the, of the, uh, of the shortages over there. And if we take a look at the Immersite crystal production over the last 10 hours, well, we can see it's been, this, the production has been nice and steady across here at 1.1 thousand. Consumption has been all over the place. Let's go back over to the last hour. Uh, consumption has been a little bit all over the place and this feels to me very much like the signs of something that's starved for, uh, for, for supplies. Although I do note that the, use, the, the rate we've been using it at is only 870 and that we've been producing it quite a bit faster so maybe we're alright. If we zoom out a bit the numbers are pretty similar. In fact that we've used more than we've produced. However looking at the last hour Maybe it's okay. Maybe it is actually filling up buffers and will be all right. I think we're going to need to keep a bit of an eye on this. We may need to boost the production a little bit. We shall, we shall have to see how that goes. In an attempt to improve things over here, I came over to Terras and I did a little bit of work over here trying to, sort of, trying, to, trying to see if there were any obvious trivial problems that I could solve. And I, found, I did find a very, very trivial one. So over here we have two production systems for the Immersium. Uh, we've got this one over here which is bringing in, as you can see, bringing in core chunks, pulverizing them down, pulverizing them down again, and then doing the 
the imasite processing here, which is making crystals and plates. Great. This is the new system that I built um, uh, sometime in the last six months. I honestly couldn't tell you when, but it was a while back. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure if you if you if you really care, you can look for a video which talks all about immersion. That'll be uh, that'll tell you. Uh, and then that flows over here to go into the train system. There's also the old system over here, which is uh, which is much much less efficient. It's probably only got yeah, it's only got prod threes and not very many of them. And it's using older machines. We've got meat industrial furnaces. We've got basic chemical plants. So this could be better. Could be it could be faster. It could be more productive and. Just Generally, it could be significantly better. However, it's an extra extra area of supply that is also being fed from core mining, and it looks like this might be a little bit coming from just normal mines as well. And so that's all being fed through here, being being processed down, and uh, and producing us at least a bit more. And if we take another look at the production graph, you can see when I fixed it. So we had this bit going coming along here, it's about 1,000, 1 1.1 thousand, uh, call it 1050. I don't know. I'm not sure what the average is along here. Then I fixed this by uh, by as I'll show you in a moment, and the uh, production spiked up to here. We were getting about 17, 1800 a, a minute coming out. Then we managed to empty all the buffers in this area and it dropped down to this sort of idle at level now, which is about 11 to 1200. So we've gained another, probably gained 10% in the long run and a little spike there. And the reason this had failed is, is kind of silly. So the way the, the way the system works here is we're, we're doing we're pulverizing core chunks down here as, a, as, as, as as typical, although it looks like we've actually completely run out. And in fact, looking at this properly now, there's nothing feeding the core chunks in because all the core chunks are being sent off to the the better production system that's a bit more efficient. So there, yeah, we've got pulverization going on here, and uh, and, and that was producing all the core chunk outputs as you as you'd expect over here, crushing down the core chunks, and then that would allow some um, iron to come up here, be made into iron plates, and that would be passed over up to here. To be made into sulfuric acid to do this stage of the Vulcan of the uh, immersion processing. That iron had run out because we'd had a bit of a jam. The we had we still had some core chunks around here, but we didn't have. But somehow it had it had got to the point where the whole system was jammed all the way back through, and so we couldn't pulverize any core chunks. So we couldn't get any iron out to actually carry on, make the system carry on running. And so I've pulled out a, a quantity of iron ore over here with these three long inserters that are just grabbing off this um, off this this disposal belt here. We're making loads and loads of iron plates here that are being fed down, and that's that's a, a secondary additional input into the into this um, delivery cannon receiver chest over here, which is a bit of a silly way of doing it, and then passing it up over here to be made again into sulfuric acid, and then processed through to be made into all of the imicide everythings. So this this system over here, it turns out, is just running off mines, which is uh, these mines up here, in fact, which is. Not really ideal because we've got a low productivity over here, but it was a quick and easy fix that allowed us to get an extra 10% out, so it sort of felt worth it. I think a better fix is probably going to be a good idea in the long run. So maybe um, either, either have this belt feed over to these systems over here if they've got more capacity for input, which... It looks like they have, because all of these belts are flowing very, very freely. We've got this coming through basically as fast as it can, and there is. it looks like there are no there are no jammed up belts, well, except this one, actually. There are very few jammed up belts, so it looks like this system is running about as fast as it can. I suspect that, yes, this one is full. Oh, it's up here, so we're making the crystal. The crystals are being made as fast as possible by these two machines, but then we also have some overflow going over to here, so, half of the, so the rest of it is going over into these plate-making machines. So if we added more input on the, on, the begin, on the input side, we would get more plates coming out, we would not get more crystals coming out. I feel like crystals are in higher demand than plates, but that's just a gut feeling. So it'd be something to look into anyway, but I'm not sure that just putting in more input would actually help very much, on, at least for the crystals. The, the plates would come, come out a bit quicker, and I suppose then we could upgrade these, these beacons uh, a little bit, but they're already using tier 6 speed modules, that's pretty much as high as I want to take them, I think. But it would mean more plates coming out, and I suppose in theory I could potentially stick another one of these machines in here if I rerouted the belts around a little bit and then redid some of the piping, and it would be possible, and in fact it wouldn't be that, it wouldn't be too difficult. It would just require moving, as I say, moving some of these belts around and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's a definite maybe uh, to get a bit more a bit more throughput on, on this. But also, another possibility would be to go out and see if there's any more core mines or any more um, imasite mines, actually. We could just set up some normal imasite mines and get a bit more coming in that way. There are more core seams scattered around the planet that we haven't tapped yet, though. So it would be possible to go out to those and then just use enormous quantities of belts to bring the, uh, bring the imasite core chunks in. Uh, these belts are very, very not full. And we could bring them all all the way down here through through this massive tangle. Can you tell that Mark set this planet up originally? Yeah, I can too. Uh, and then bring it in over here, and, it, and we'll we'll have more flowing in over here. And I think yes, there's quite a lot of spare capacity in this system, even if it might mean we need a third copy of the of the processing going on over here. Definitely room for expansion. Definitely a potential to get a bit more immersion and immersite out of here. Uh, we may well need to do that. We'll keep an eye on it though in the next stream.
if we do end up putting in a, sig a significant increase to the amount of uh, Immersium we're producing, I think we may end up needing an additional ship, and I believe we already have two. Yes, the Taras 1 and the Taras 2, so we might need to put in a Taras 3, because there is so much byproduct that comes through with the Immersium. As you can see in here, if I sort this warehouse, um, the, the actual Immersium is only taken up a little bit in the middle here. The rest of it is taken up by sulphur and sand and stone and the other normal things we get out of core processing. So there is a huge amount of other stuff that gets trucked through along with the Immersite. It doesn't seem to be a problem yet at the moment. Like we don't, we don't actually have full warehouses here, and therefore that means the ship has showed up before we were at, we're at any sort of crisis level. We haven't we haven't got to the point where production down on the ground has stopped. However, I wouldn't be too surprised if we ended up needing a third ship if we if we expand production even further. So, but then that's easy enough to do. You just copy and paste a ship, give it a new name, and it'll carry on going and doing doing the same thing as all the other ones. So I'm not I'm not too worried about that either. But these are all things that will need to be done if we want to have more Immersite and Immersium available. Looking out in space, you can see the Terrace 2 is actually nearly back at Norbit. So we've had the, uh, the, the, uh, the ship has flown out from here, it's gone all the way up here, is nearly back at Norvis. And if we take a look in Norbit, you can see this sort of supports what I've been saying. We've run out of crystal in the system here completely. The train has gone, um, but I think the train might have gone just to deliver plates to wherever plate is needed and or there may be some funny business going on here. The other advantage of splitting this off into two separate trains is it'll make it a bit easier to tell when there's been a problem and how, how severe the problem is and you won't have trains running around that are just carrying something that isn't really needed by the, uh, the, by the downstream systems. So yes, I think splitting off a separate train to do the plates here would be an excellent idea and would make things a lot more... It'd mean we'd have a lot more logistic capacity here and it would make things a bit simpler and it'd make things make a bit more sense as well. So I'm definitely in favour of doing that. And now moving on to trying to keep everything supplied properly. And yes, that is that does mean we're going to talk about Holmium. So Tristan's done something rather unusual and different. And he's a bit paranoid that over on Njord, he's going to run out of stone before he manages to fill a spaceship up with Holmium. And so he's decided a good way to get around that would be to tell any spaceship that's parked here to depart when the next one arrives. That means the spaceships will be flying essentially continuously. They'll, be, they'll fly over to Norbit, they'll unload, reload with all the stone, then they'll fly back over to Njord bit, where, where they'll kick the other spaceship out and then park and then start unloading. And the way he's done that, well, he thought about a couple of different ways. The obvious and simple method would be to put a signal transmitter on the spaceship itself and then have it say when it when it arrives in Njord bit, it'll, it'll know where it is, or at least it'll know where its destination is, and it will know that it's arrived at its destination. So it can then send a signal through a, through a signal transmitter over to the, uh, the, the orbital system here, and then tr we can trigger the, um, the, the circuitry here to tell the other ship spaceship to get lost and go away. There's another spaceship wanting to park here. However, that feels putting another transmitter on a spaceship feels a little bit inelegant and a bit not not the nicest of fixes. So he's come up with an alternative instead, and so he's got a system that says when the uh, when a spaceship leaves Norbit to head over to Njord, it will start a timer running, and when that timer gets to a certain number, we know how long it takes for a spaceship to fly this distance. When it's 90% of the way there, or 95% of the way there, something like that, it will then send a signal to the spaceship over here to tell it telling it to leave at that point, and that's the circuit circuitry up here. So we've got a couple of combinators set up here. The first one is watching for C, which is count. Whether if that's less than thirteen thousand, if it sees any ticks on the input, it will output them, and that means he can have the ship depart if it fills up. If it fills up before the other ship has arrived, then we still want it to go and take the take the Holmium back to over to the over to Norvis. So we'll say if time is less than thirteen thousand, so the, the ship has no chance of having got here yet, but you're still getting a tick in from anywhere else from the rest of the system, then you pass that through. Alternatively, if, ti if the time has got above 12,000, then we want to output a tick to tell the spaceship to leave. We've then got a system down here that's watching those saying, well, if either if, if there's more than zero ticks, then output one tick. And that's to make sure that we don't tell the ship to depart when it shouldn't otherwise depart. We don't want it to be both, there is a ship waiting and the, and the system is filled up with uh, Holmium, but something else is wrong with, this, with it, and there's another reason why it shouldn't leave, like it's still unloading stone on this side, for example. So that makes sure you can only get one tick through from those questions, but it means it, but it, means it will trigger and leave on either of them. Over here we have the, the signal coming in from, from the Njord ship timer, and that is currently at 122,000, so I'm not sure why the ship is still here. I guess that just means this hasn't quite been finished off and hasn't been wired up properly yet. And I was going to say that signal will be coming from here, from, if from Norbit, from the Njord area, where when the ship leaves will trigger something, but I can't see any signal transmitters here, so I don't know where he's put that. Uh, I don't know how else you'd be measuring when a spaceship leaves, or when, how, how long a spaceship has been in flight for. 
I also don't think there's any way to search for where a signal is being transmitted from, so I'm afraid I can't tell you where that's going to come from. I'm sure Tristan will let us know in the comments whether he's either whether it's because it's not finished yet, or whether it's because the signal is being sent from somewhere else, or I'm just being blind and haven't managed to find it. But essentially, the idea is that we will have, when a second spaceship flies out over here, if, it, if it's had time to arrive, then this ship will be told to clear off so that the other ship can land and start unloading the stone. Because the system is quite hungry for stone, we feed, it's brought down here in the train, as you'd expect, and then fed out along the belt over here, uh, which needs a little bit more upgrading, although that said, it seems to be flowing at a fairly comfortable speed. We currently have a stockpile of 7,000 in there. That feels like quite a lot. I don't know whether that's going to be enough or not, though, because it's all fed, then fed down here, crunched down, and then turned into hydrogen chloride, which allows the, uh, the Holmium production to carry on running. And the Holmium production has been creeping up over the last 10 hours. We now have a reasonably steady, about sort of 700-ish coming out, and with, with, with sweeps going from da down for all the way down to 500 up to 800, uh, 900 over here. So there's, there's quite a wide range of amounts of Holmium being produced. However, at the other end, it looks like we've probably run out because that has nosedived all the way down to zero. Now, it is possible that we've just got everything we need for, from Holmium, but I think that's quite unlikely. I suspect this is down to a, to a, to a supply problem. A certain quantity is being produced. So we'll have to wait and see how that gets on. Oh, Tristan says he's also reduced the amount of stone being requested because he didn't want to over. He had he has it set reasonably low so that he doesn't overfill the ship. So there's a relatively small amount being held in this warehouse. But then there's also this warehouse, which I didn't comment on when I was looking at it a moment ago. Sorry about that. Uh, which is saying that over here, we, well, there's 25,000 in here, but this is not counted as part of it. So we always want this to be full. But the way it'll work is we'll bring over mumble 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 thousand in the ship. It'll be unloaded into here, drained through here as quickly as possible and then the next spaceship that comes through will bring more over so yeah it, it, it should in theory keep us with a decent amount of stone over here and that should keep the system running quite nicely the question is is it fast enough and the production graph suggests probably not but keep an eye on it it might be all right you never know hmm and taking a look at the power consumption for Njord, we can see that there's quite a lot of spikes on the accumulators here. And that suggests that in the last, well, we, are, we have had quite a few times, even in the last hour, when there has been insufficient power. Now, we can't tell really by how much, because these accumulators will kick in for a few seconds and then they'll be exhausted because there's only 1.3 gigajoules in them. And we're using gigawatts of power. So we, we can, But we can see from that that we've had some fairly severe power shortages over the last hour. We need a lot more solar out here. Meanwhile on Bigrid, well, this actually happened the week before, as in just a, as in almost two weeks ago when um, when Mark was last with us, because unfortunately he missed the last uh, stream. But um, yes, he, he put in a new tag over here, so, which I completely missed when I was talking about the extra mines he'd put in, um, because I'm not very good at spotting things, basically. Uh, so this up here, he's put in these two new mining areas up here to get more, 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 more Vitamelange, because as we've discussed many times, we're getting through crazy, crazy amounts of it. And he's added in a new processing system as well, so he's basically doing on-site processing all the way from Vita Ore through Vita Nuggets to Vita Roast to Spice to, to uh, maybe even to Extract. No, no, it's just the um, it's just the Spice that's going to be coming out of here. Although this area has stopped. And I wonder why that is. Oh, it's because it's overloaded on uh, on methane gas. So he needs a, he needs a, the vent system. This has presumably not been hooked up. So we've just got the pipes going across the top here. That will need to be connected to the methane freezing system that's down here somewhere, allowing us to ship that out as methane ice that goes over to Norbis and then finds its way over to Talos where it can be used as part of the Naquium processing. So that needs to be done, but it's um, it's, it's not and it's not urgent, but also it is stopping all of this running. So, for example, if I come in here and just say I want to vent all the methane out of this system, uh, then you can see all of this kicks in again, starts running quite happily, and we're then pulling the Vitamelange through a bit more quickly. Things are running, we, we're going to have a, a bit of an output coming through here. That will then presumably flow down into all of the rest of the other uh, processing facilities uh, that we've had we've seen before many many times over, which is quite a long way. You can see why we call them mark belts, can't you? They'll come over here and they'll be fed into this warehouse as well. Um, the belts obviously go, oh, they get merged onto a green belt here, fair enough. Uh, and they'll go into, into this warehouse, which means they can then be used for more extracting over here, where we'll make more vitamin lange extract. Uh, these machines, yes, these machines are a little bit starved for input, so that will help quite a lot. They seem to be start, they seem to be output blocked as well, though, so it looks like we are actually producing this stuff at the rate we need it to be produced at. And if we look along here, you, we, we will see that. Interestingly, it looks like we have enough reagent, and we have easily enough epoxy, we have enough of this spice. And I was going to say it's just the extract that's running, but then it stopped. So maybe we are about caught up with the Vita stuffs. Um, we shall have to see how that's going. I suspect it's, it might be a case of when it arrives over in Norbit, will then it'll then get pulled off and all turn into more modules. But we'll see. We we will see how that gets on, how how it goes, because at the moment we do seem to have all of these belts stopped. And looking over in Norbit, uh, yeah, there are quantities of things. 
but there is no extract over here, so that has clearly not run well enough. Looking down here, we have we, things we have a shortage of extract, fair enough, and a shortage of bioscrubbers. There's a few bioscrubbers in here. We've got four, four or five thousand of them, and also a shortage of epoxy. And there's a little bit of epoxy in here as well. We've got about uh, seven, nearly nearly eight thousand of it over here. So. Yeah, we don't have quite as much of a number of those things as we'd like. I think we would, ideally, we would like to see some in these chests here. But looking over here in orbit over Bigrid, yeah, there's only 6,000 reagents trying to make its way through. The ship is mostly full, although mostly full of trash, I suspect. Yeah, there's a huge number of core fragments here, uh, some wood, and then there's the little, this little bit of Vita, the actual Vita stuff that we really want down here. So I think giving it a little bit of a nudge to, on all of these numbers, probably doubling or even tripling the amount that's trying to come through would make a big difference and it would it would mean the system over here would run much much faster for a little while but i think we yeah we do have shortages of all of those so i would say probably increase the amount of vitalic reagent now these numbers are all all a bit wrong i suspect this is down to the usual sort of power issues with memory cell systems that i was talking about yesterday re with regarding the uh, some of the naquium stuff or the, at least the things over on talos so if i put this up to 70,000 here. Well, we'll get we'll get a load more flowing through. If we put this one up to 20, 20 and a half thousand. Why not? Uh, we'll, yes, we'll get it flowing through. That part works. However, I do think there is probably a, an issue that in that the amount there is in the system does not match the amount we're trying to watch for over here. So a bit of thought will be required for that, and maybe ha taking a look at some of the power supplies and just seeing whether we whether we've had any power problems over the last mumble 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 hours. If we look back over the last 10 hours, let's do this in the same way. If we look at the... Okay, we, we had a few spikes four hours ago, three hours ago, two and a half hours ago. So we have had some power issues, and I suspect these accumulators have, will not have been enough to smooth that out. So, yeah, we need more solar over here. And so I suspect these glitches in the power uh, supply over here are going to be throwing off the memory cell system and, and giving us the inaccuracies we've been seeing. So that's something that is going to need a bit of expansion out here, I suspect, just to make sure that we always have absolutely enough power. And... Hopefully then that will allow these these to carry on working much better and we'll have... Uh, oh, and I, and I also need to increase this one as well if I'm going to be doing this sort of thing. And so having having a bit more of everything flowing through here means the trains will run a bit more. We'll, we'll be able to send that spaceship off. We'll get a bit more of all the things we need over in orbit and hopefully we'll be able to get this sort of back so that we have healthy amounts of all of the Vita everythings over in orbit and everything can run nicely because there's, there's a few issues here. So the main reason I came over here wasn't just to talk about Mark's new mines and processing facility up here. It's because Tristan said he, did, he, he fiddled with something over here. He says he's improved the, uh, the the core processing system, so that'll be around here somewhere. Yes, he's put in this green bit along here because quite a lot of the core chunks were making it through. They were getting past here because of the the, the vagaries. But, oh, because we have a green belt feeding in and then we had a blue belt along here. So sometimes when you got a solid chunk of, of uh, core chunks coming through like, like, like this, they weren't all able to make it through into the core processing and therefore they're getting passed over back over as core chunks. As we saw in the spaceship actually when we looked up here in orbit, we can see there's a huge quantity of core chunks in here. And it's better to be pulverizing them down into the uh, into the constituent parts rather than shipping them as core chunks because it's a lot more efficient on how much stuff you can fit into the uh, into the spaceship because if you see here you can see we get 20 core fragments in a stack whereas all of the ores stack up to 50. And if you look at the core fragment processing recipe, you can see that for every 20 core fragments that go in, you get 8, 16, 20, 28, 32, and some fluids coming out. And that's probably, yeah, and all, all the fluids and the uranium are probably fractions of a stack. So for every 20 core fragments that go in, you get 32 items coming out again. So since the stacks of the core fragments are 20 and the stacks of all of the ores and stone are 50, that means for every stack you put in with this recipe, you get two thirds of a stack out in the form of all of these, all, all of the, uh, the ores and a smidgen of other things as well, but it's mostly ores. And so even if you then got a 50% productivity boost from pulverizing them, you're still going to be better off bringing it through as the ores than you are as the core fragment. And down here on the ground, we have we have a 32% productivity boost. So it's going to be a, a little bit more efficient to bring everything back over as ores instead of as cores. And the other advantage, whilst the system here can cope quite happily with core fragments being brought in, they're passed up these at this belt over here, which winds its way around here. And so these core fragments can go up and they will go into the processing system up here. We already have quite a lot of core chunks being brought in by all the trains here. So if we can get it pulverized on another planet, that's it's kind of useful. We might as well. It'll it'll allow the system over here to run a little bit more cleanly. So it's it, it's better to pulverize on site with the with the core chunks, both from a logistics point of view and from a sorting them out over on Norvis point of view. 
Yesterday I talked about how there were shortages of vulcanite, and to keep things symmetrical, there have also been shortages of cryonite. So uh, those were not due to an increase in the amount we're using though. It was unfortunately due to a mine down here. This mine is apparently starting to run a bit low, or at least a mine was starting to run a bit low. I'm guessing it's this one, because it's the only other one. And so Tristan's come and he's put in this, you can tell this is the new mine because it's missing a few of the drills. He clearly didn't have quite enough of them. But that is now giving us a bit more. We've got some nice solid belts coming through here. They're all being merged over here with this, um, this merger matron and that's then sending sending all of the uh, all of the uh, cryonite ore off to be processed in in the systems and if we look at supply and demand over the last mumble 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 time well you can see there was there was a big dip over here that's um, that's kind of surprising that must surely that must have been as I was either us running out of power or it's us having enough and I suspect it's probably that we had enough and so the system went to sleep for a little while and then it's been churning and then it was churning through at this rate it's gradually you can see it's gradually slowing down it's not quite enough and then Tristan came in put in the extra mind here and given that that little bit of a boost so we've now got we've now gone from 2100 to 2400 being you being produced and if we look over the last hour this we've got a wibbly thing here this is probably due to some due to some other consumption somewhere else in the system kicking in and out and um, and using more or less cryonite depending on exactly what's going on at the given any given moment but you can see that we're clearly producing a lot more cryonite than we're using and if we take a, a good look at the uh, snowdrop drop-off station over in Norbit you can see that we have a lot of cryonite available so I would say this is this is fine uh, we have plenty of cryonite available I, I'm not worried about this we are producing it faster than we're using it everything is great and you know what, while we're talking about supplies, let's have a quick look at the graph here. So we'll, we'll start over here on the left with the things that don't matter. So over here, iron plates don't matter because we are making them on demand, so there's never any in stock, so we don't, don't show any there. Steel plates, exactly the same. Plastic is weird because that's a, um, it's an overflow. So we're normally making plastic on demand in the oil area. However, we have a coal overflow that is used to make plastic. And so this is sort of, this is sort of weird and upside down, so we'll, we'll ignore that one. Stone is not full, but it's well into the green. Same for red circuit, so I don't have any concerns about that. We don't seem to have any purple belts, but I don't know, maybe that's just not plumbed in properly because I'm fairly sure we do because I demanded a load last time and they all appeared. So either I've completely emptied it or it's absolutely fine, just not hooked up properly. I don't care about liquid rocket fuel. We don't use that for anything. Yeah, we're a bit short of advanced science, as I was saying earlier in the video. Um... Not a lot we can do about that until we get the Immersium uh, up and running a bit better. All the other catalogues across here seem to be fine, all the way across here. We seem to have a bit of a shortage of the Tier 1 Deep Space Sciences. That's a bit weird. Might have to have a look at that. Uh, all of the, the, these three, Crownite, Vulcanite, and Beryllium, all great. Holmium, very, very short of Holmium. We've, we've, we've seen that being a bit of an issue recently. Uh, we'll, we'll, hopefully it'll catch up. I know Tristan is still working on it. The iridium, um, I can see that, that I can see that bar growing as I watch it. So a spaceship has clearly just arrived. So that looks pretty good. We've got a bit of an issue here with the vitamelange extract. That's completely run out, but that's because we've been turning it all into modules. And there's the the problems I was talking about with the uh, the memory cell system a moment ago. We are not happy about the amount of immersium crystal, immersium plate over here. Those are going to need some work, as I've been saying. But um, yeah, they, they need a bit of a kicking. And we have quite a lot of naquium, which is rather nice. Oh yes, and we have a load of arc spheres as well. These all seem to be at about the same level. Things seem to be going all right there, and then we've got some spare ones over on the end. So the only one of these that's really concerning me is this one here with the uh, with the Deep Space Science 1 catalogues. Looking up here in space, those are in fact, yes, there is a shortage of those. And if we have a look at why, we can see it's because we don't have the snowflake data. This is feeling very familiar, which is because we don't have the, um, the nanomaterials, which is because we don't have the dynamic emitters, which is because we don't have uh, quantum processors, our old friend, the quantum processor. So... Yeah, that's probably related to the Holmium shortages we were seeing earlier. This system is ready and re raring to build stuff, but until we can get some more quantum processors, which come from just over here somewhere, until we can get more quantum processors running, which means we need more blue circuits, which is also Holmium limited. So, although we didn't seem to be short of those on the ground, so oh, I don't know. I still want to build a new town to make these all by itself and have solid trains of everything coming up. Because here, we're showing loads of blue circuits on the graph, and be that's because there's loads of blue circuits in the station over here, and lots of blue circuits have been fed up into this energy train over and energy systems train over here so we've got a load of blue circuits in here they're just not being brought up to space because we're not quite full and that appears to be because we've not well we're, well we're just not quite full we're not quite demanding enough so we need to ask for a little bit more and if I come so if I come up here and say actually I want to have 4,000 blue circuits please then we'll quickly flow in some more like this that will fill the train up and then it'll actually be ready to leave okay that was that was a train 
throughput, a tra a train behavioural issue. We'll very, very quickly fill this one up. I say very quickly, it's a, they stack quite high. But once we fill this train back up again, the train will then depart. We will then be able to start making quantum circuits, but it's still a bit, it's still a bit limited and it's still not going quite as nicely as I would like it to. So I think the next step is going to be to produce a, another separate quantum processor production system. So all of this stops being a problem. You may also have noticed that it looked like we had a shortage of um, tier three and four deep space catalogs. Now that's not actually true. Uh, we have them, be they are backed up along the belt up here, I expect. Yes, here we go. We're making the tier threes here and the belt is completely backed up and we're making the tier fours up here and the belt is completely backed up. Uh, so the reason they're not showing on the graph is because we don't have any sort of storage system to put them in. We could put in an inline chest along here that will just stock some so we can we can tell the graph whether it, whether we've got some or not. We could put a reader on here and just read the number from a piece of belt somewhere up in here near the top and send that down and add that onto the graph and, and just watch for whether there's four or whether there isn't and essentially have either and have the graph either be full because we've got loads or empty because we've got none. Uh, it would be a little bit weird though so I'm not sure whether we want to do that but it would at least make the graph look a little bit more um, a little bit more accurate for what we what we've got at the moment. So as I say the, uh, the yes the deep space science threes and fours are both absolutely fine. The deep space one catalogs not so fine because of the shortage of the quantum processors down here but we should any moment now get a flood flood I tell you of blue circuits down here so here they come through they're into this into this warehouse coming down this belt down to about here and then they will soon pour in over here and we can start making the quantum processes again but this has been so problematic it keeps breaking it's not producing them fast enough anyway so that's this is why I keep saying I want to pull these off to somewhere separate where it's not sort of so reliant on or so jammed up by everything else that's going on around it if we build it somewhere else we'll have a lot more room for expansion around it and therefore we won't, we won't be limited by the fact that it's in the middle of the energy science area so I think it's about time we move this off a bus into its own little town somewhere and now I think I'm going to stop the video there we've got uh, still got enough to say for another video tomorrow about um, Mike getting spaceships lost uh, getting the how the iridium seems to be doing and also the explorations and the sort of the, the science and the, and, the, and the plot related things that have been going on there's always a bit of that happening as well so I'll be getting I'll be talking about that a bit in uh, tomorrow's video so please come along and join me for that one make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on it and then on Monday we'll be back for the uh, stream as usual where we'll be going through and trying to fix everything that I've talked about that's been broken today and yesterday and tomorrow oh so much stuff that needs expansion just to try and get the science up and running nicely oh. I will then not be back on Wednesday for a satisfactory stream I'm afraid it's going to be cancelled next week because it is a show week I'm going to be in the theatre so I shall not be uh, doing the satisfactory stream although the uh, Factorio stream will be happening as normal and then at the weekend we'll have these catch-up videos as usual Friday Saturday maybe Sunday depends on how much we've got to talk about and then next week the streams will be back as normal so Factorio on Monday and satisfactory on Wednesday so as I say thank you very much for watching please make sure you come back for all of the other stuff happening on the channel I look forward to seeing you then thank you and bye bye